Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. We have dy over dx squared minus 1 equals x squared. dy over dx is the derivative of y with respect to x, and we're going to try to find that function that satisfies this equation. So let's go ahead and add 1 to both sides first. And then at this point, we can go ahead and square root both sides, but that's going to give us two different results. So dy over dx is either the square root of x squared plus 1, or dy over dx can be written as the opposite of square root of x squared plus 1. So we're going to go ahead and solve the first one and then just negate the result because that's fairly easy to do. All right, great. Let's go ahead and proceed. Now, what are we going to do to solve this equation? We can first go ahead and separate the variables. So let's go ahead and put the x's on the same side like this. And then we're going to integrate both sides. Since this is a separable equation, very easy to solve, we're just going to go ahead and integrate both sides. And the integral of y with respect to y is going to be y. So dy, I mean the integral of dy with respect to y is going to be y. Not very straightforward, so we need to work on the integral of square root of x squared plus 1. So let's go ahead and start with the first method. I'll be presenting two methods, by the way. The first method involves Euler's substitution. So here's how we can solve this. First of all, let's go ahead and set this equal to x plus t. And then we're going to square both sides. Now, you might be asking, like, why do I do that? Because when you do, you're going to be able to write x in terms of t, which is a really cool thing to do. Anyway, so we square both sides. x squared cancels out. And then from here, I want to isolate x. So 2xt equals 1 minus t squared. Divide both sides by 2t. 2t or not 2t. <laughs> All right. And I'm sorry, some people don't like that joke, but... I just like making it. Anyways, x equals 1 minus t squared divided by 2t. Uh, so we were able to write x in terms of um, t. That's cool because we're going to use substitution. And then we do need dx. Let's go ahead and find out what dx is. dx is the derivative of x times dt. Uh, so the derivative, it's the quotient rule. The derivative of the numerator, negative 2t, multiplied by the denominator, minus the derivative of the denominator, which is 2, multiplied by the numerator. And all of that is divided by denominator squared. That's the quotient rule. And of course, don't forget to multiply by dt, otherwise you're going to lose points, right? Okay, negative 4t squared minus 2 plus 2t squared over 4t squared dt. That's dx. And now we can go ahead and simplify this and write it as negative 2t squared minus 2 over 4t squared dt. And finally, we can write it as negative t squared minus 1 over 2t squared dt. We can go ahead and divide the numerator and denominator by 2 to write this in the simplest form. So we got dx and we got x. So we're going to go ahead and, you know, plug it in. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is we initially said that square root of x squared plus 1 is x plus t. So let's also evaluate what x plus t is. x is, as you know, 1 minus t squared divided by 2t. And we're just going to add another t to it, and that brings up 2t squared divided by 2t, and this is going to become 1t squared. So square root of x squared plus 1 can be written as t squared plus 1 over 2t. Great. So basically what we're trying to do is first start with the substitution square root of x squared plus 1 equals x plus t, and then write everything in terms of t. So let's go ahead and do that. We have square root of x squared plus 1 dx is what we're trying to integrate. And now square root of x squared plus 1 is going to be replaced with t squared plus 1 over 2t. And then dx is going to be replaced with negative t squared minus 1, which is actually the opposite of this, by the way, divided by 2t squared dt. So that radical expression actually turns into something nicer, a polynomial divided by another polynomial. Not only that, but it's a monomial, so it's easy to separate. So we can go ahead and take out a negative one-fourth, right, easily. And then inside we're going to have the following, t squared plus 1 squared divided by t to the third power, and dt. 
Now I took out the coefficients, so I don't have to deal with them anymore, but let's go ahead and um, square, what is it called? Expand t squared plus one squared. That is t to the fourth plus two t squared plus one over t cubed dt. And then finally, not finally yet, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead and separate them. This is gonna be t, this is gonna be two times uh, t to the power of negative one, and this is gonna be t to the power of negative three. Now this is very easy to integrate, by the way, we're just gonna use power rules. If you integrate t, you're gonna get t squared over two. This is gonna give you two times ln absolute value of t, and then this is gonna give you t to the power of negative two divided by negative two, which you can also write as negative one half t squared, I mean t to the power of negative two. So let's go ahead and do that. It's gonna look better. Negative one half t to the power of negative two. Now one thing to keep in mind here is these are related. So we're gonna go ahead and put them together. Actually, this is what one thing I can do. I can take out an, um, one half. So that's gonna make negative one eighth t squared minus t to the power of negative two plus two ln. Actually, that's, just, that's not gonna be a two anymore. That's gonna be uh, since we write it as two times, uh, that's going to be a four, right? Okay, let's see. Yeah, because we do need, when we multiply, we're going to get negative one half. So that's supposed to be a four, uh oh, four ln absolute value of t. Okay, makes sense. At the end, it's all going to even out. Anyways, uh, what is t squared? What is t? Remember, what is t? I forgot. Okay, t is equal to, oh, okay. We don't even know what t is, but we do know what x plus t is. So, square root of x squared plus one is equal to x plus t. So from here, t becomes square root of x squared plus one minus x. And that's gonna be a very special expression, by the way. But anyways, to find t squared minus t to the power negative two, let's go ahead and evaluate t to the power negative one first. And t to the power negative one is actually the reciprocal of t. And when you multiply by conjugates, that's going to become a conjugate. Okay, what do I mean by that? It means that this is going to become uh, x squared plus 1 minus x squared from difference of two squares, and that's 1. So the denominator is 1, so the numerator is 1 times that. Therefore, t to the power of negative 1 is just going to be the conjugate of t in this case, which kind of makes sense, right? Sort of. And now we're trying to evaluate t squared minus uh, t to the power of negative two. So negative one eighth multiplied by, what is t squared minus t to the power of negative two? And then plus four ln absolute value of t and all of that plus c. Okay, now here's what we're gonna do. t squared is gonna be that squared and t to the power of negative two is gonna be this one squared. Let's go ahead and write it that way. Square root of x squared plus one minus x, that's t squared minus square root of x squared plus one plus x squared. Remember, that's the difference of two squares. And let's go ahead and separate. So how about uh, distributing the negative one fourth? That's gonna give us negative one half ln absolute value of t plus c. Okay, we're almost there. Uh, so this is gonna be from difference of two squares. I can basically write it as square root of x squared minus x plus square root of x squared plus one plus x. That's one of the factors from difference of two squares. The other factor is gonna be square root of x squared plus one minus x minus the square root of x squared plus one minus x because when we subtract this, we have to negate it. And that's gonna be the first part and the ln part is just gonna follow. Can I just leave it dot, dot, dot for now because I don't have any space. These two are gonna cancel out. These two are gonna cancel out and I end up with negative one eighth multiply by two times x squared plus one times negative two times x minus one half ln. Now I can replace t with square root of x squared plus one plus x and then plus c. Awesome, almost there. Now uh, two times two is, um, two times negative two is negative four. Negative one eighth times negative four is one half. That's gonna give us a big giant one half on the outside. And inside we're just gonna have x times square root of x squared plus one and then minus ln absolute value of, actually you don't need absolute value because this quantity is always positive. So I can just write it as square root of x squared plus one plus x and all of that plus c. Awesome. That brings us to the end of the first method and the beginning of second method. So bear with me for, the, uh, for another couple minutes and then we'll be done. At the end, I'm gonna show you a really cool graph. So stay tuned. x equals tangent theta, 
Where does the second method come from? Wait a minute, that was too quick. Okay, here's my original problem, and here's what I'm going to do. Whenever you see the square root of x squared plus 1, or you see x squared plus 1, x equals tangent theta is the appropriate trigonometric substitution. So that's what we're going to use. What is x squared plus 1? It is tangent squared plus 1, which is secant squared. What is dx? If x is tangent theta, dx is secant squared theta d theta and if you put all of that together inside the integral you're going to get the following secant theta times secant squared theta d theta and integral of that and that gives you the integral of secant cubed theta d theta i'm not going to go over that because i already made a video you can go ahead and see that video right here Okay, let's go ahead and write down what the secant, uh, the integral of secant cubed theta is, and that is one half secant theta tangent theta. And if you want to see how it's done, you can go ahead and watch the video. Ln secant theta plus tangent theta, and all of that plus c. And if you plug in the values now, secant theta. What is secant theta, right? This is theta. Tangent theta is x, remember, so x over 1. And then the hypotenuse is square root of x squared plus 1. Secant is 1 over cosine. This is cosine. This is secant. So secant is square root of x squared plus 1. Multiply that by x. And then ln of the sum of those two things. And you got the answer. Again, you know, I don't need the absolute value. And that's going to be the end of it. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to look at the results right here from Wolfram Alpha. And also, I'll show you a graph. Here you go. The graph of the solutions. Uh, I made the uh, blue and the white, um, one of the graphs dotted, so that you can see the overlap because these two graphs completely overlap. So you could also write it as an inverse hyperbolic sign, blah, blah, blah. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.